Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, Peter here. So, um, a little bit of happening before we get started with tonight's show. Um, over here will be the 27th episode of the Classic Wrestling Series, which is in your, uh, which is a TNA Lockdown 2009. Here will be, um, episode 95, TNA Lockdown 2009. So, um... A little bit of admin, I was supposed to do uh, TLC 2016 in between the um, rock, uh, the Raw from January 7th, 2013 and um, <laughs> Heatwave 2000. Um, didn't do that, network was playing up, so I decided to choose TNA Lockdown 2009. So the top one, uh, the top video here, uh, at the end of the video, will be the first review of uh, TNA Lockdown 2009. Underneath it will be the second review I've done just to see my opinions changing and stuff like that But ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna jump back into the world of the WWF And you know what? I want to do an In Your House again So, let's not waste any more time, let's do In Your House Degeneration X Let's do this guys So surprisingly, our first matchup is Taka Mishinoku vs Brian Christopher for the newly in, uh, inaugurated Light Heavyweight Championship, and I don't admit, I was very impressed by this. This was a fun matchup, I don't admit. I have to also say that I prefer their match at No Way Out of Texas, the rematch for the belt. But this match was very entertaining, I thought. Crowd weren't really into it as much until the end with the, uh, with the Mission Oku driver to get the win for Taka. But at the same time... This was a fun matchup. If you just had a look, you know, if you were watching it without listening to the commentary, because oh my god, the commentary in this matchup mentioning that Brian Christopher was fucking um, Jerry Lawler's kid, for God's sake, it annoyed me. But by that, this was a fun matchup, and I do actually enjoy seeing the the, um, the Japanese. Photographers were actually in the ring with uh, taking pictures of Pat Patterson, uh, Joey Briscoe, uh, with Tucker for the belt. I do enjoy that. I think that's really cool, actually. You rarely see that nowadays. Um, again, this was a fast-paced match. It's obviously very good, but again, I do prefer their rematch. This was a little bit clunky. I don't know if this is the first time they've ever faced each other, but at the same time, it is. At the, you know, they're not as experienced as they would be at No Way Out of Texas. And again, the commentary just really annoyed the other of him fucking to me. But with that all being said, guys, great way to start off the show, I thought. High-paced, entertaining, and with the quick victory with the uh, Mission Oculus driver as well. Also, it does help that uh, Brian Christopher bust his lip a little bit. Um, it does work in that sense, because it was an accident, but at the same time, it's a safe way to do it. So... I have no idea what we've got next, guys, so let's get to it. Uh, just before we carry on, guys, with our next matchup, which is a six-man tag, uh, just wanted to quickly go through uh, how Tucker and Brian Christopher got to the match that we see today. So it was an eight-man uh, tournament uh, featuring on Raw. The quarterfinals and semifinals were both on Raw. Uh, on November 3rd in Hershey, Pennsylvania, Al Gula uh, defeated Super Loco. Uh, on November 10th, Taka Michinoku defeated uh, Devon Storm in Ottawa. Uh, November 11th, uh, Eric Sherry defeated Scott Taylor, uh, who would later be known as Scotty Too High, uh, in Cornwall. Uh, November 24th, in Fayetteville, I could be saying that wrong, Fayetteville, um, Brian Christopher defeated Flash Flanagan, and then obviously November 25th, uh, Aluguda. Uh, a G U I L A uh, defeated, uh, lost to Tucker Michinoku could be a pin. And on November 25th, uh, the same night, uh, Scott Taylor forfeited to Brian Christopher. So that's how we get to December 7th, which is uh, Springfield, Illinois, um, in um, this matchup. So just want to tell you that. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we have got in a six man tag, we have the Disciples of Apocalypse. Uh, eight ball chains and skull taking on Los Bulicas. Um, oh god, I can't say any of these names. Jesus Carlosstone Jr. I think I'm saying that right. I'm very sorry if I butcher any of these names. I think I will do. Uh, Joe uh, Jorge Estrada Jr. and Miguel Perez Jr. Again, very sorry if I butcher those names. Uh, so let's watch this matchup, guys. 
So we had the uh, six-man tag between Lost Bullikers and the Disciples of Apocalypse. Um, kind of an entertaining six-man tag. Uh, pretty weird at the same time. Uh, this was when it was Gan War, well, Gan Warfare in w, uh, WWF to try and counter, excuse me, the uh, NWO coming into WCW. <laughs> Basic six-man tag. Lost Bullikers get the win. End the story. So uh, next up, guys, we have a tough man match whatever that is okay so we just had mark merrill and butterbean in the tough man contest this is basically just a boxing match basically um here's the thing butterbean has a record as of now uh 77 10 and 4 equal into 91 total fights uh he's won by knockout 58 times mark merrill is also a golden gloves boxer so just have this as a boxing match. Have like three, four rounds and have somebody get knocked out. Why have Mark Merrill get DQ'd by hitting a low blow on uh, Butterbean? Because in normal boxing, that would be a that would be a warning, and then it would be a point deduction, and then it would be a disqualification, I believe. I, either that or I'm thinking of uh, MMA. I could be wrong. But at the same time, this could have worked as an actual boxing match. I mean, they do for fucking brawl for all, for God's sake. I think this is before, uh, this is after the brawl for all, and then after WrestleMania 14, where Butterbean took on Bart Dunn and legitimately knocked knocked out Bart Dunn. So what's wrong with making this just a simple boxing match? I mean, Butterbean did legitimately knock out Mark Merrill. So at the same time, it kind of works, kind of doesn't. I mean, the fans were not interested in this. At all, they weren't. But I mean, the referee did his job well. I mean, I don't know if he's had previous in boxing experience, but the referee did his job well. He was able to pull them apart. Was able, you know, break it up. You know, get in the middle of the ring, fight. You know, it was good for the bot. You know, from the referee's perspectives. And I feel like this could have gone a little bit further. Maybe gone round four, five at least, and have a knockout. Have Butterbean get knocked out. Otherwise, I don't get why it's on this card. No offence, but no idea. It was entertaining, but at the same time, really just not interested in it. So, let's get back to some actual wrestling. Um, and I believe we've got... What the fuck? Oh, great, we've got Goldust and Luna Vachon. Skip, let's get to our next matchup. Hey guys, sorry about that little... Bah, bah. <laughs> uh, I pressed the wrong thing, I do apologise about that. Uh, but we just had the New Age Outlaws versus the Legion of Doom for the uh, tag team title match. Uh, championships, not the match, for fuck's sake. Um, this was okay. I mean, it is Legion of Doom and the New Age Outlaws. So th and this was actually quite entertaining, I gotta admit, that one. Uh, so, two weeks previously, uh, New Age Outlaws stole the belt. So that's where the... Uh, uh, the name the New Age Outlaws came from because they did steal the belt off of the uh, Legion of Doom. Um, entertaining. Um, obviously, New Age Outlaws win, get the belt. Uh, this is basically just the night of DX. We've got a lot of things coming up involving DX. We've got Sh uh, Ken Shamrock taking on um, Shawn Michaels for the belt tonight. We've got Triple H coming up next against Sergeant Slaughter in a boot camp match. Uh, which is going to be very entertaining, I hope. And yeah, we've got these guys. So, with that all being said, the match was entertaining, well paced. Uh, they did talk for way too fucking long at the beginning of the New Age Outlaws. But, bar that, it was a fun matchup. So, let's get to our next match, which is the boot camp match between Triple H and Sergeant Slaughter. So, we just had the boot camp match between Triple H and Sergeant Slaughter. And this was okay. I mean, as a boot camp match, I have seen I've, I've seen better matches, but this was too further for feud between Hunter and Sergeant Slaughter with the you know with the uh, dynamic of having sl Slaughter the authority figure and all that jazz. Um, so yeah, you know this this was a foregone conclusion. Triple H would win the match, but at the same time, it was very entertaining. And Triple H wins with the pedigree onto the steel chair. Fun fact, Sergeant Slaughter uses Kurt Angle's theme, which is also the Patriots theme as well. Just a little bit of knowledge for you guys. But next up, guys, we have one of the more random matches on this card. We have Jeff Jarrett versus The Undertaker. Okay, let's watch this match. So, we just had Undertaker versus Jeff Jarrett. 
And Jarrett wins by disqualification because Kane attacks The Undertaker, further in their feud going forward, I believe, at Unforgiven in a few months' time. Give me a moment. I've done a pay-per-view. No, it wouldn't be. It would be No Way Out of Texas, and then it'd be Unforgiven. They would have their uh, Infernal match. Whilst at WrestleMania 14, they would face off for the first time against each other. Um, it was actually an okay match going into it, but then, again... Kane comes out, attacks Undertaker, and Jarrett wins by disqualification. Only way Jeff Jarrett is going to be beating The Undertaker. Sorry, but that's true. Uh, we have a promo with Mark Henry coming up. He would debut a little later, if I recall. I could be wrong on that one. But again, that match was okay. It was entertaining. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for our next matchup, our penultimate match tonight. Stone Cold Steve Austin... Versus The Rock for the WWF Intercontinental Championship. Let's do this. Okay, so we just had Stone Cold Steve Austin versus The Rock for the Intercontinental Championship. And I swore this match went longer. Like, legit. I swear it went longer. Maybe I'm just remembering things from uh, WWE 2K16. But this match went about five minutes, which is really weird. It's Rock and Austin going at it. You know, I, I've seen their classic matches before, WrestleMania 15, 17, and 19. This didn't really live up to that hype, unfortunately. I enjoyed the match, but what we got, it was, I think it just went under five and a half minutes or so. But we had D'Lo Brown, we had Farouk, we had Mustafa, uh, Carmen Mustafa. We had all them out there. Obviously, Rock, uh, Austin beats them all up to get uh, the man, of, you know, to basically get it one on one. But at the same time, the referee got knocked down, and this would cause confusion because Austin would stun the referee, but then the referee would be like, no, disqualification, but then the referee, uh, another referee would pay, you know, it's a bit confusing, but this would lead into, uh, on Raw, where The Rock would relinquish the Intercontinental Championship to The Rock, so then he could win the Royal Rumble, go on to face Austin, uh, go on to face Michaels at WrestleMania 14, uh, 14 for the belt. So that it would be the culmination of Rock's rise to the WWF Championship. Same thing, um, again, it's not a bad show. It, you know, this so far hasn't been a bad show. It's been a bit mm, hit and miss sometimes, I'd rather admit. But the match was okay. It's decent. It's Rock Austin. Of course, it's going to be good. But ladies and gentlemen, now we have got Ken Shamrock versus Shawn Michaels for the WWF Championship. Let's watch it. So, we just had Ken Shamrock versus Shawn Michaels it, for the WWF Championship, and this was... Okay, it was okay. It was a good matchup until the ending where Diaz gets involved. Hunter and China are out with uh, Shawn, obviously. Uh, of course, the disqualification, so obviously we're not going to be getting Shamrock as the new champion. But at the same time, the match was good. It was an okay match, don't get me wrong, it was decent, but at the same time, it's like, oh, why the disqualification victory? The Ken, makes no sense. Maybe if this was for the European Championship, yeah, and then you can have Sean win. But at the same time, it's just a bit silly. It's a bit stupid, and I don't understand why this was for the, uni uh, for the Universal, the WWF Championship. At the same time, good matchup. But then at the end of the show, Jer uh, Jericho, Owen Hart comes back, makes his return, attacks Shawn Michaels, puts him through the table, and basically declares that he's back. He's going to be going for the European Championship, which is being held by Shawn. But, uh, uh, but uh, Triple H would win the belt off of uh, Shawn uh, at Christmas, if I recall. I could be one on that one on the Christmas episode of Monday Night Raw. But again, this was... It was an okay matchup. I mean, Owen Hart's making a return to attack Sean. Makes sense because of the whole situation with Brett as well. After the Montreal screw job. Can't believe I just had those words in my fucking gob. Um, but yeah, at the same time, it feels real. This actually feels legit. But at the same time, it's like this gives ideas for the fans to come in and attack the wrestlers, which isn't a good idea, I think, personally. But in the storyline sense of it, it does make sense. So, what did I think of the show overall? Um, I mean, it wasn't a bad show. I mean, there was some absolute garbage on this show. I mean, do we really need the boot camp match? It wasn't good, but it was okay. Further the storyline between those two. Um, didn't really need the six-man tag as well, I thought. Even though it was an okay match, again, it was not needed. 
Um, probably the best match of the night, I'm going to have to say, was maybe Sean versus uh, Ken Shamrock. With uh, Taka Mishinoku versus Brian Christopher, uh, a close second. I will admit that, guys. So, with that being said, that is episode 108 of the classic wrestling series Out of Sight, Out of Mind, Out of Pocket. But where are we going to go to next? I don't know, guys. Uh, well, give it a bit more time. I might be able to get a few more episodes out, <laughs> he says whilst laughing. But no, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be ending it here. But next week, uh, we'll deal with next week. But tonight, guys, we got AEW Dynamite. And it's the week before winter is coming. Looking forward to that show. So, like I say, guys, episode 27 of the Classic Wrestling Series is going to be here. And episode 95 is going to be down there as well. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching episode 108 of the CWS. And I will see you later tonight for AEW Dynamite. TTFN. Ta-ta for now.